I am Paul Waite, and I am joined today by Andras Tarzi, the Chief Executive and Founder of SMD, who are, what do you say you were, Andras? Well, I am uh, I am a CEO of uh, Social Media Directions, and I'm working with franchise businesses for over seven years now, and I try to help and educate people about franchise business, especially in a digital marketing field. So, uh, effectively, on Aspen Weight Radio, for those of you who are listening to Aspen Weight Radio for the first time, uh, we basically aim to bring an all-inclusive uh, offering to the market. We we don't care whether you're one or a hundred, and whether you like franchising or grunge or or anything else for that matter. <laughs> That's so, exactly. Uh, and 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 the message is is starting to get real real home. So um, Andras uh, has come up with the idea of the Franchise Factor Show, or oh, sorry to get the word, the Franchise Factor Show. So um, before we go on too much, so um, t- tell us all about your background and th- what SMD does and how you came up with the idea for this show. Well, as I said, I'm a founder of a company called SMD. Uh, it's a digital marketing firm specialized, specializing in multi-site businesses, uh, notably franchise businesses. I'm an entrepreneur from 25 years now. I built and sold businesses in IT field and uh, entertainment and marketing sector as well. And I'm now looking to extend this and try to get more for people to learn about franchise businesses, especially uh, digital marketing field in franchise businesses. Uh, SMD, our tool, is a software solution. And what franchise businesses is uh, using the tool in 35 countries at the moment is to manage their social media to make sure that their brand is protected in that uh, environment. You might have noticed a slight accent, um, which isn't uh, from Cheddar or Seven Oaks. So, um, <laughs> it's definitely not. I'm originally from Hungary. So I'm, I am a Hungarian boy. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a, that's a subject for another another day. So um, I am uh, Paul Waite, and I am the Chief Executive and Founder of Aspen Waite. I am, for my sins, a chartered accountant and spent most of my life uh, p- pretending that I wasn't uh, over, over the time. So Aspen Waite is in its 30th year, and in six weeks' time, we will be, yeah, we will be 30, and we will be having lots of fun along the way. Uh, met Andras three years ago. Four now. Four, is it? Yeah, yeah I made him cry. <laughs> you did, actually, yes. And your partner, a, Norbert. It was an a, amazing conversation. Had a, had, a bit of, had a bit of a toot. <laughs> so I'm um, very proud to be doing the show with Andres today, um, as well as being the chief executive of Aspen Weight, who basically bring to the market a comprehensive range of professional services. That also includes uh, marketing uh, and media and I think I'm right in saying that we are, we were the first, if not the only, maybe because no one's as stupid as me in the world, <laughs> uh, the only uh, company of our kind to launch a radio station, which we did in uh, June 2020. So the radio station is now about three years old. So I'm um, doing great things, got a few new programs starting up, and uh, we're definitely, with Andres's support, going to be expanding the business content of the station and i think whether you are a franchise veteran or just beginning on your journey we hope we can provide you some insight and uh, and what is necessary for your success um, um to be honest this, uh, there will be several exciting segments uh, include spotlights of particular franchise brands guest interviews uh, with uh, like industry gurus mm-hmm. education segments and deeper understanding of franchising model and the digital marketing advice as well uh, on, through our experience with SMD and Aspen Weight Group. I guess, um, as so we're planning to do this every two weeks, are we? For now, I think it will be probably more than because so many people are interested. We got, we got the buzz. So many people want to come and, and talk on, in this topic. It's, it's quite a good topic at the moment. I mean, it'd be, it'd be, it would be quite nice, ideally, if this became a fairly participative show, wouldn't it? I think, yeah, it will be. I'm pretty sure it will be. So if you are listening... Um, and there's anything you would like us to talk about or um, you would like a request, then feel free to say, I'd like you to play whatever it is. Mm. And we might play it. Depends what it is, as long as it's not too cringeworthy. And of course, if you have any questions regarding franchising and the franchise business, just let, let us know and we will discuss that topic in, uh, in one of our shows. 
Now we are moving into our first education slot where we aim to demystify the word of franchising for you. Mm. Sounds very exotic the way you say it. That's right, Andras. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the franchise mar- model. Sorry, <laughs> franchise model. What it is, how it works, and why it might be a good option for both business owners and entrepreneurs. So I guess let's start with the basics. Uh, franchise is a type of business model where business owners know as the franchisor allow individuals and other businesses know as franchisees to operate under their brand name and business system. Exactly. And in return for this, uh, the franchisee pays an initial fee and ongoing royalties to the franchisor. Usually that involves some sort of sort of welcome pack, you know, including all sorts of things, isn't it? It to is, do with the brand yeah. and uh, basically, the, 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 as much as the franchisor can screw out of the franchisee, in my experience, this model allows the franchisor to expand their business with less risk and capital. Uh, and the franchisee um, effectively gets to operate a business with a proven system and brand recognition. So they don't have the same startup risk because hopefully the, the franchisor is a proven success with a proven brand. People know who it is. And, um, and, and in theory, you get off to a profitable start. And it's usually one of the good things what we can you do your due diligence and have a look if the franchise is actually operating well and working well. Now, there are different types of franchise models. The most common one is the business format franchise, where the franchisor provide a full system for running the business and the product distribution franchise, which is more like a supplier-dealer relationship. Yeah, that's right. And uh, each type of franchise has its own advantages and challenges. For example, with a business format franchise, you get a lot of support from the franchisor, but you also have to follow their system very closely. And of course, franchisors you know, can be quite rightly demanding about uh, their process. You take oh, McDonald's and they are. Everything. <laughs> every single McDonald's in the world, uh, every piece of paper is the same. Uh, the That's systems true. are the same. The colors are the same. Everything is the same. And this is obviously incredibly important. On the other hand, with a product distribution franchise, you do have more freedom, but you also have responsibility for developing, more more responsibility for developing your own business strategy. Yeah, well, it could be um, a higher risk, but it could be that your individual thoughts are, are more stronger in the business and it's helping you to grow the business. So you can choose. Yeah, so I mean, it's, 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 it's an interesting one. I, I think the, the franchise model is, is a good sort of compromise for people who aren't like me, like unemployable and, um, you know, complete, you know, uh, and you and I, you know, share on uh, entrepreneurs. And then on the other hand, you've got the employee type, you know, employee mentality, and and maybe the franchise thing offers something, in, in something between. in between. Absolutely. You know? So it's um, it's not quite as risky as, as starting up on your own. So there we are. Now let's talk about Wonderful. why someone might choose to become a franchisee. Well, one of the main reasons is that it can be less risky. That start a, fra- a business from scratch. You are working with a proven business model, a recognized brand, which can make it easier for you to attract customers. Sure, absolutely. And another reason is, is obviously, as we discussed just now, the support you get from the franchisor. This, this can include pretty much everything you need to run a business, to be honest. Um, this includes... Uh, training, marketing support, assistance with site selection and setup. Um, if, if you're new in business, this can be invaluable. Also, uh, standard systems, processes, computer systems, as we were talking, you know, different pa- paperwork systems, accounting, reporting. Absolutely everything. right, yeah. But obviously, it's not all uh, roses. There are also challenges to consider. For example, uh, the initial investment can be quite high compared to when you're building your own business from from scratch. And also, there Mm -hmm. are ongoing costs like royalty royalty fees. Plus, uh, you have to follow the franchisor's rules, uh, which can limit your freedom to make decisions. Sure. Yeah, that's true. And why it's um, that's why it's so important to do uh, your research before you invest in a franchise. You need to understand, you know, what you're getting for your money, what the true cost is, the real support you're going to get, not necessarily what the franchise always says. Um, obviously, some idea as to, um, you know, how reliable, how credible, how strong the, the franchisor is, has been. Uh, the expectations of the franchisor about you, 
Um, are they, you know, are they basically unnecessarily interfering in your business? Which is not necessarily. There's, there's a very thin line, I think, between support and interference. Yeah, that's, for me, that's, you know? that's absolutely right. But still, uh, there are some people who will um, handle that that really important support and and following the guidelines a lot harder than others. And this is why franchising is still not for everybody. Sure. Um, and of course, and I think this this is advice that I would give to any would-be business owner, not just somebody starting up a franchise. Um, it's absolutely important. It's a business that you're passionate about. So uh, far too many people get into businesses um, mainly because they got fired or, you know, <laughs> they became redundant and they, they need they need to do something and they, you know, they, they go into uh, self-employment or set up a company. And of course, it's, um, you know, it's not a coincidence that, um, the the average business fails inside three years. And that's that's because uh, the would be business owner doesn't do their homework enough. Probably doesn't know the market. Maybe undercapitalized. Of course, that's another thing. I don't know if we're going to talk about that. You know, the, the budget, yeah. the budget of the franchisee is is obviously hugely important. And even though if you got all the support when you're choosing um, um, to be a choose to be a franchisee, it's really important that whatever business you choose, that's something where you believe in and you can actually enjoy doing it as well because there is no difference in a franchise business and a normal business, you're, what you would build, you need to enjoy it and love it as well because you're building a business here, what will be your everyday job and task as well. So yeah, well, uh, stay tuned for more insights on the world of franchising. Uh, this was our uh, educational section, sector, the first one. And then uh, we will have really soon um, Louis Harris to talk about um, franchise and uh, um, the biggest challenges of, in franchising uh, in 2023. Welcome back to Franchise Factor. Now we are moving into our digital marketing tips segment, Ooh, what is painful. obviously my favorite segment. <laughs> uh, we're sharing some insights and strategies to help uh, your franchise to thrive in digital work. Am I allowed to talk about bookkeeping then? <laughs> but you can you can always talk about bookkeeping. We can, it's just, we can overload people with excitement. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. People digital, will just switch off. <laughs> digital marketing segment and bookkeeping. Do you know the bookkeeping was invented in 1492 by Luciano Pacioli? I'm, I'm pretty sure digital marketing is not as old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, all this levity on such a fine day. Um, so today we're focusing on local social media management. Uh, a key component of a winning localized marketing strategy. We're going to share six tactics to improve your local social efforts. So let's start with the first tactic, what is leveraging the right platform. It's crucial to understand the target audience and demographics like age, ethnic, interest, gender, uh, income levels, and more. And this will impact which social media platforms you should prioritize in the sense of Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google. It's different for every single business. Yeah, absolutely. And once you've chosen your platforms, the next step is to develop engaging content. So, you know, I always think, um, you know, impact, getting people's attention. They always say, you've got 10 seconds, haven't you, to, 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 to basically grab the attention of someone. If you can get someone to go, wow, I, I, I personally react, react to visual images, you know, very strongly. Um, yeah, I think visuals are, are, are strong for a very long time and it will stay. And this is showing with all the new platforms that are coming up, like TikTok and other platforms, is videos and, and all the visuals are, are, are keep getting stronger and stronger, especially videos there. So yeah, and uh, remember, different types of content will resonate with different audiences. For instance, uh, Gen Z gravitates towards short videos, as we just mentioned. So if you target audience for is uh, Generation Z uh, or younger millennials, you want to post short and informal videos. Yes, uh, and our third tip is to interact with potential customers. Uh, this includes responding to users' comments on your posts, Leveraging Facebook Messenger to answer customers' questions, and and also um, resharing relevant content. I think yeah, that's definitely quite an imp a powerful thing to do. Consumers like to feel heard and seen. We all like to feel important, don't we? <laughs> and interacting with them on your local social platforms does exactly that. So um, I always think you know you can make someone feel if you can make someone feel like they're your only customer. That's that's success. 
Yeah, and especially with localized um, marketing strategies and social strategies, because they they know that who you are, and especially with franchise market, it's so important to understand that the person who you're talking to is local to you. You can approach them; it's there and available as well. But let's talk about local advertising, because social media advertising can help your brand to stand out from the competitors and win more customers. Most social platforms allow you to create custom campaigns, target relevant audiences. And this is including like eye-catching calls, call to actions, like click here, read more, uh, play this video. And obviously the best uh, and most useful tool for this is that it's easily retargetable. So if someone is interacted with one of your content, then very easily you can retarget that person with another content. And these are uh, really, really relevant and good tools to use. And we're using it constantly with our marketing, especially in lead generation. Uh, you will build an advert, what is get people's attention, you're retargeting them with another video and kind of leading them through on this small funnel and get them more and more engaged with the content till they're giving you the information what you need. Very good, Antras. What a it's good when a boy knows what he's talking about, isn't mm -hmm. it? So, um, our fifth tip is to utilize messaging capabilities. Mm. Um, many local social platforms have messaging capabilities that can add value to your local social strategy. Responding to direct messages is a must, and some chat box marketing solutions provide the opportunity to integrate with local social platforms. That was a lot of gobbledygook, wasn't it? So, uh... <laughs> well, listen, it is. I and mean, we are in the age of AI. And most oh, of I the, like AI. Yeah, the first communication is now, and in, in about 75% of the companies will actually come through a chatbot or an AI who will answer the questions. But you really should be there for your customers if they're asking questions, especially when you try to generate leads and try to sell your franchisee locations for uh, the potential clients. And finally, our sixth tip is to analyze the data, make improvements. Um, a local, media, local social media strategy without insights and reporting is just, it's not complete. So you need to understand uh, your current uh, social media efforts, performance locally and adjust accordingly. Yeah, that's right, Andras. And remember, focus on efforts that are working and spend less time and money on those that aren't. With these six tips, we hope you can level up your local social efforts and win more customers. Please make checks payable to Paul Waite, um, <laughs> care, care of Santa Claus. Um, no joking. That's, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. And then obviously to wrap this up, the digital marketing tips segments for today, uh, stay tuned for more. And obviously every single time when we're coming back with the franchise factor in every two weeks for now, we will share some uh, good marketing insights and, and, and it will be something where you can use in your own business as well. Okay. So we've got um, a couple of songs taking us up to uh, the two o'clock news. And then we've got our very special guest. Uh, so who have we got today? Oh, we got Louise Harris, and, uh, and she's an expert on um, all franchise. So now the fun part of today, we have um, the wonderful disco queen, I've just found out, <laughs> who's uh, the best dancer in Hungerford um, and uh, even better at singing in the shower. Uh, but I've been kicked off the show by, by Andras now, so um, oh, yeah. take it away, Andras. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Paul. Well, I have Louise is a qualified franchise professional with a diverse background of franchising industry. Her experience ranges from being a franchisee and franchisor to work in a head office of several brands. Uh, driven by her passion for franchising projects, she is committed to enhancing franchise opportunities and helping businesses to be the best they can be. Louise also served as a board member for the British Franchise Association, advocating for ethical business format franchising. She is known for her values, honesty, integrity, transparency and sustainability, which she incorporate into her approach towards building profitable and sustainable businesses. Despite her uh, dedication, <laughs> Louise always aimed to add an element of fun to her work, living by the mantra, we only live once. But thank you very much uh, to, to spare some time and, and uh, spend some time with us uh, in this show. I'm really, really happy that we can have a chat. We are friends for many years now. I think we met on some kind of expert panel uh, where we have a lot of fun. And I'm really happy that you are here. Thanks, Andres. 
Yeah, so um, I will start Kickstarter. This is the topic of the day is the biggest challenge in franchising in 2023. And my first question to you, Louise, is could you start by telling us a bit about the journey in the franchising field? And how did you get started? And what led you to where you are today? Sure, of course. Well, I think my husband's to blame primarily. Um, when I met him in 2000, he was talking about expanding his business. Uh, he is a chimney sweep or was a chimney sweep at the time. And I know that that's really quirky. And there's a whole bunch of jokes that we can make around chimney sweeping <laughs> and you can sing me Mary Poppins and all of those things. Uh, but it's a really sound business. And uh, I was uh, doing some other work. I worked in serviced offices at that time. And when we uh, got married, um, we decided that we would look at franchising his business. So we went off to a franchise exhibition, um, a British Franchise Association event, mm. and had a look at what there was. And <clears throat> probably a little peculiarly, completely diverted ourselves and bought a franchise. Uh, I bought the franchise because I loved the name, I loved the people, and I thought it'd be really great. And it was in lettings and property management. Mm. Uh, and property, you know, is quite is something that I've been involved in a little bit. So I thought, yeah, this is going to be great. Um, a whole bunch of things were wrong at that point. Mm. Uh, I hadn't really done much due diligence. I didn't fully understand it. Technology was, you know, in in when we bought it in 2006, it's hard to believe that we didn't have smartphones yeah, and uh, mm. we barely had Wi-Fi. I mean, I don't think Wi-Fi actually existed. Mm. Um, you know, I did it from a laptop that I had to come home and dial up and, and dial into things. And it just was not successful because technology would have made it really good. Mm. Um, and then... I sold that business. I worked for them for a while to try and change things. And then I joined uh, and then Peter and I franchised Wilkins Chimney Suite uh, in West Berkshire. And it was we did that with professionals. So we had a franchise consultant, uh, Clive Sawyer, and we had a franchise lawyer, Jane Massey, both of whom I, I now know to be absolutely fantastic in the industry. They're very well known. Uh, and they supported what we did. Um, and the great news is that that also meant that we got, uh, we were seen to have been very successful in terms of having done it right. So we used the right resources, we joined the BFA, we did all of the things and we did it right. And we grew the business. Uh, and then in 2018, uh, someone made an offer for mm. us and we sold the business to tailor-made franchising and it was like selling my baby uh, uh, yes, i missed yeah. it every single minute of the day i absolutely loved it but it was the right thing to do um selling your business is a whole other conversation at another time i'm sure but mm. uh you know i can say it was it was a really tough time to do that but my husband was retiring and so that's what he did he retired and and i carried on and hunted in the wilderness a little bit for what I was going to do next. Worked for some other businesses, as you say, and then finally find where I am now, which is um, essentially a freelancer. I run my own business with a foot in two camps. One is in um, helping companies with their onboarding of franchisees. How do you how do you make them feel comfortable? How do you train them? How do you drive that initial push? And the other side of that is the operations manual. And I have developed some software uh, to support the operations manual and due diligence for franchisors. Absolutely amazing. Well, what an experience you have. So I think it's 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 the right that I will ask you that mm -hmm. what would you say is the biggest challenge in franchising in 2023? Mm. So I'm, just, that, I'm gonna fail at the first hurdle with that question <laughs> because because I, I think the challenge in franchising generally is that it isn't a one size fits all. Mm. There are, um, and depending on the stage in your uh, life cycle of your franchise, so whether you're really new and starting out, whether you're growing or whether you're very established, it comes with different challenges. Um, and I would say that there actually are a couple of major challenges. Um, 
for the franchise industry as a whole, our challenge is making sure that people understand that there is a right and wrong way to franchise. Uh, and that's genuinely the truth that the the whole concept of ethical franchising um is spoken about but it's like it's very difficult if you ask somebody what ethics are yeah that that's quite difficult that's a difficult question to answer um so it's it's an unregulated business so uh there are people out there who are who are poor franchisors who are who behave badly <laughs> who don't do the right thing and there are people who do great job uh, and are completely ethical um and so i think one of the biggest challenges for the industry as a whole is helping people to understand how to choose the right franchise for them so the, for the franchisee or the prospect of of buying a franchise they're people that i think uh, face a challenge we and we as an industry need to make sure we're educating the public about how fantastic franchising can be, but where the pitfalls are, where we can guide them. So that's one of our challenges I, in the industry. Beautiful. I, I, I agree with you. And then um, one of the big light bulb moments for, for me, uh, is, and you just said educating our people about the French, it's, it's, I, I'm really amazed how little information is still out there regarding yeah. how and what is franchising down to the level. And that was one of my favorite story uh, on one of the meetings we heard when when someone will actually go against the franchise because they're opening up because they are not local, they are a global business because they don't yeah. understand that it's literally your best friend, your local friend is the one who will exactly. own that franchise. And it's it's really a lack of that. Um, yeah. that, that that's, that's absolutely brilliant. So can you, I'm going to go away a little bit from my, my original questions as you. you well, I, to I'd like to add yeah. actually what the other challenges please, are. Please, please. Like, if I may. Of course you so, so a second challenge is actually about helping the franchisees to grow their businesses. Um, I think we're all very aware of mental health uh, and the issues around mental health and business owners often suffer. Um, and we think that we bring people into franchising and we offer them this great opportunity and they're very hyped about the success and they you know they leave their training and they're really excited and they're offered all sorts of support but for some reason some franchisees just stall and they stall because i i believe that a lot of it is around mental health they're, they're suddenly they're working on their own they feel alone they don't take advantage it doesn't matter how many times it, and this is the same in life. It doesn't matter how many times we say to people, we're here for you, just ask. Actually, one of the challenges for franchisors, I believe, is that we need to be proactive in talking to franchisees. Never just leave them alone. Um, never assume that silence is right. Um, and, and a lot of that is around, you know, people are working from home. They've had a lot of isolation. They've had lots of challenges. Even franchisees starting now, they stall. And that's a, a kind of bigger picture around mental health and the support that we give people. And I'm not going to go into that either, particularly mm. in any great depth, other than to say, I think that that is a challenge. And it's something that franchisors need to deal with. Um, one of the challenges is that you build a franchise network, you build your model, and you're moving along very nicely and something comes in. I already referenced, for example, technology. And I think I know that's something dear to your heart, Andras, that, that you know, we need to utilize technology to help our franchisees to be successful. Um, but if you haven't got any tech or a piece of technology and you try to introduce it, it is really difficult. Right. And the analogy I use is you think about the times you've been on a training course. And you come in the first day and you all sit at the table and the next day you come in and you all go to the same place. You haven't been told you have to sit there. You've chosen that place. And for some reason, you're going to stick with that place. As humans, we are shocking about this. So when I was a trainer, I, I, I was a trainer with KLM Airlines. Uh, the yeah. thing that I used to do every day in a training session was I would move the places mm. and I would change it up. And honestly, creating that tiny little bit of change was really, really challenging. And I use that analogy when I'm talking to franchisors about 
getting your model right, but building in the fact that it's going to change. You don't know how, but you are going to change is really, really important. Um, and I think, you know, I introduced a new CRM with um, in Wilkins and I was lucky. I, I mean, we're, chimney sweeps were always lucky, by the way, mm. but we had just this stroke, this moment when there was some information about we needed to produce a certificate of sweeping. And in order to do that efficiently, the technology needed to happen. So we needed to make that change. Um, otherwise, it was going to be more and, and actually printing certificates was going to be more costly than actually using the tech. So I think, you know, it was a no brainer financially. I, I don't know why I use that expression. I don't like it. Um, but we, it was really critical at that point. But the, I think the biggest headache, uh, and I'm not saying this, Andres, because I know that social media is, is really dear to your heart, but the biggest headache is the whole piece around marketing. It's getting for for in franchising it's not a threat it's a challenge for franchisors because we consume as as users as end users whether we're franchisee prospects whether we're buying a franchise whether we're buying a cup of coffee we can we are influenced by different things now we're influenced by what we see on that tiny little screen or or our computers uh, it's rare, but sometimes we're also influenced by the parish magazine that drops in the door <laughs> or a leaflet. Or, but but we're also we will we'll listen to our friends, um, and you know we'll we'll they'll tell us you know all oh, that pain in your leg. Oh yeah, it's definitely broken. Uh, they've got no they've got no credibility in the medical field, but they've told you that, so you're going to believe that you've now got a broken leg. So there's all sorts of other influences, and the challenge for a franchisor is that they actually need to position themselves and be the expert, or find somebody who is the expert to help drive that. It's kind of the same in all aspects of their business, but I think the one common thread for all franchises is that somehow we need to get our product or service in front of the People. client. Customers, clients, yeah. And so I think, I feel that, uh, you know, uh, that that's really where our biggest challenge lies. It sounds amazing, to be honest. And you are, I, I cannot agree with you more. And this is what we find with our clients. Um, when you try to uh, introduce a new technology, especially when when a, a franchise, uh, the franchising model will bring you to the level when there's so many different type of people, business owners, people who, who just came from a job that get into the business and try to understand how it works. And most of them have no experience with, for example, digital marketing or, or social media. And one thing where we had to develop as we working with franchise businesses is a very specific uh, onboarding um, package, what really helping the franchise business to get the software, what we're using, the technology onboarding yeah. to those franchise businesses, because it was so hard to, to get through. It was just, oh, we don't want to do, even if it's helping them. It's just, yeah. as you said, so hard to change from what you already did and learn yeah. about that. You are absolutely yeah. right, and this is this is a huge challenge. I, I absolutely agree with you. But thank you very much. It's, it's great. It's a great <laughs> point, and yes, it's a really close to my heart as well. <laughs> we had the real thing, and then we had the Beastie Boys, and now we're back to the Beastie Boy himself with the lovely girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome back to the franchise factor. <laughs> that was an amazing song. Yeah. So, um, uh, back to the point, I really, really like that. And what you think, Alois, in your opinion, what is the best way to approach, approach this, this issue? Is it, uh, is it the franchisor needs some kind of training or education, and then it's, it's going down to the franchisees? Uh, what, in your opinion, what is the best way to do that? So in, in the franchise, the perfect franchise world really is that the franchisor has a, uh, has a test unit, whether it's a company owned unit or a franchisee who is the test bed. Um, and so I, I very quickly learned uh, that. So there was Peter and Peter and I in the business and we had a fabulous uh, PA, um, Lisa, who worked with us. Once we were four franchisees, frankly, we were outnumbered. So if we had a vote, we were outnumbered. Um, and I think 
what it really taught me was, although management by committee is never a good thing, the franchisor needs to be the expert. The one thing that I think I would say to every franchisor is listen to your franchisees. If they are saying to you they want something or need something, you need to address it. Um, and so for me, for example, with social media, and, and, and uh, this is a slightly old uh, story now because of course we sold our business in 18 but at that time we said well we need to get an expert on board we asked people to help us with who who might be appropriate um, we went out to tender we got pitches from them the franchisees chose who they would bring on board um, so they had buy-in um, and we managed that uh, and it worked really well. It's not always the best. I mean, a franchise or if you've got 100 franchisees, having 100 votes means, you know, you really you you run the risk of a real swung vote or, or a hung vote. And it's very difficult. Uh, so I think having a franchise council who guide that um, and. I always feel like you have to have on your franchise council or on the people that you listen to, you have to have the puppies, the people who are like, oh, yes, let's do that. Oh, shiny new thing. I'll play with that. But you also have to have the Eeyore. You have to have the, oh, that'll never work. That's That internet there, it's never going to catch on. You have to have your Eeyore in that team. Not disruptive, but somebody who kind of always goes, oh, yeah, you, you know, let's just take a step back. Well, I'm not sure this is going to be the right thing. And you have to have some people in between. Um, if you only put tech people on your social media discussion, guess what? Everyone will go, yeah, 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 it's great. But the people who are lagging behind won't really feel engaged with it. So you've got to take people along on the journey. Franchising is a human business. These are, you know, whilst we might joke in the same way as as I'm sure in every business is there, there have been moments where we've said life would be so much easier without clients. <laughs> uh, what, you know, they just drive us potty for some reason. It's the same in franchising. Franchising, franchisees are your customers. Um, and there are times when it's really tough because you can't, please everybody you can't serve all of the masters that you are working with um but you have to take them along with you you have to and you have to find ways to engage one of the challenges isn't the right word but one of the things to note here is that your franchisees will often come from very similar backgrounds because that's the nature so if you look at for example a dog walking bis business uh, or uh, yeah, dog walking business, you are going to have people who have a really high level of care and love for animals. Um, they're probably not as motivated by the dollar. Mm. Uh, they're getting a lot of their business satisfaction from their engagement with, with the animals. Uh, and that's a, a driver. So you need to work with that. You need to appeal to them. Um, I've worked in franchises where they they only have business people. They have only have people with a really strong sales background, for example. You've got to appeal to those people. So your approach to your relationship with your franchisees is different. And, it, it, you know, there is no one size fits all ever. But I think, you know, my, my recommendation to anyone coming into the business, they usually have run a business. They know what it's like. They, they've done this already they've they've been whatever it is the dog walker or the storage consultant whatever it is that they're doing but they our goal as a franchisor is to make sure that it, those people are have a voice in our business and that we work with them i th i think that that's there isn't a magic pill sadly Especially if it's an international business and then you just oh, understand uh, yeah. different cultures. <laughs> yeah, absolutely understand. And different languages. Different uh, languages, yeah. And you really have to have that. Yeah. And then the master yeah. franchise will have their own own ways as well. It's just a very, very complex situation. But I think it's, it's thank you, it's it's absolutely right. That's the right the right approach. And as, as well as I said, be, be able to to provide the right training and, and um, information should be accessible all the time and they yeah. just listen and, and it's really interesting how a lot of times 
um, you forget that that exactly the franchisees are your customers. And you still, as a franchisor, there's a challenge for you as you're looking down to your franchisees as a customer. But also there are customers who your franchisees serving. And it's a totally yeah. different approach. And, yeah. and especially when you're doing social media, there are certain elements what you need to see from the head office perspective, franchisor, and then the franchisee need to have a totally different aspect, but still on brand. And I love this yeah. challenge. I just fall in love with the challenge. It's, it's, a, it's I, a... I agree. I think it's just a really, inc it, it's a puzzle for me, oh. you know, and, and you've got to get the pieces in the right place, but you also need to keep moving them around and changing the picture and changing the landscape. And every now and then a piece will pop out and you'll be left with a hole and you'll be going, I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. Mm. And that's actually where you use your peers in franchising. I mean, the number of times that I spoke with established franchisors and also emerging uh, and said to them, how are you dealing with this? The forums that the BFA ran were amazing for that for me because, you know, okay. there's no thing as an original idea. I stole everything. <laughs> I'm unashamed. Uh, you know, and I would come up back and we would, look, is that the right solution in our business? So you're not alone in franchising. It just feels like it occasionally. I think there is a lot of support and I, I really enjoy the how franchisors supporting franchisors as well. So there is a, there is a really good community and you can, you can get around and do those stuff. And especially, especially with BFA, all those forums are absolutely amazing to, to help yeah. and support uh, each other on the journey. So, just a, just a closing down this um, what I'm really interested in. do you see that this is actually going in the right direction is it is it actually developing going further or or it's something what we really need to address and and step up um yeah it's a great question I think whatever happens in franchising we will always have change and it's how we how we embrace change and how we work with it. It will always be there. It will always be there. And it's incumbent on, on franchisors to understand that, to acknowledge it, to address how they will manage change. And and we're not talking about major, you know, direction changes. You're not going to go from dog walking to storage expert in, you know, and say, oh, we're changing completely. <laughs> well, if you are, then you are slightly more mad than, than I thought. But you, you are going to go maybe from dog walking to, cat sitting um and you know you are going to adapt and you and we it's incumbent on us as franchisors to make sure that we know that that we build that in that we talk all the time about the fact that things develop and change I, you know i i am doing some recruitment for a franchise brand and one of the um processes is that they have to get their franchise agreement renewed and just this morning, I had a question about, can you confirm that the term of the next agreement will be the same as the term of this agreement? No, no. <laughs> absolutely not. Because if market forces or something changes that says, instead of a five-year agreement, you only get one or you get 20. No, I can't. I, you know, And if you're averse to change, business is not a comfortable place for you to work in. It, it's not a great place because I the I don't know that there is ever a role or a, a way of life except when you retire that allows you just to go on at the same in the same direction consistently for years upon years. So you know and that's the nuance that I have had the conversation with the franchisee, and I'm not sure there'll be a franchisee to be <laughs> honest because they're they're so desperate to to tie everything it's down. It is, isn't it now? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Brilliant. Well, Louise, thank you very much. It was absolutely amazing to speak with you. And um, thank you very much for all the insights and, and, and your expertise. And I'm pretty sure you will be in this show again, um, oh, if you agree. <laughs> I'd love to come back. As you can tell, I can talk for England on the subject. But yeah, I'd love to. It's it's great that you're doing it. Looking thank forward you. to more Franchise Factor. Am I allowed to ask Louise a question before she goes? Yeah. So I'm happy. <laughs> so... Um, I think I think the economy's in, in in probably in as bad a shape as I've seen it in my professional career. Do you think that this that that makes franchising more or less attractive at the moment compared to other businesses? Uh, that's great a really question. great question. Great so I'm not an economist, <laughs> uh, and I'm fairly sure if I could answer that question with an uh, absolutely empirical response, I'd be uh, in government right now. 
or, or definitely paid more than I am. But here's here's my take. If you're buying a franchise, look at how they've traded through a recession period. Um, and many franchises are will have have got evidence of how they did during that time. And people will say they're recession proof. I, I nobody's recession proof because it happens to us. So you know it's going to happen. Um, but how did they do? How, did how, did they have to? I love this word. Did they have to pivot during that time, mm. or did they actually, you know, steer their course and keep going? Um, so I think from that perspective, um, there's a question to be had. But there are there are some statistics which were produced a long time ago, and no, they've kind of got they're, they're tied up in the myths of franchising. It may or may not be a myth. What I know is that we've always said that run, if you're going to start a business, starting a business from scratch is less likely to be successful than if you start a franchise, if you buy a franchise, because the hard yards have been done before you. The challenge is that actually that hasn't been road tested because, uh, and someone explained this to me recently, which was which was kind of an enlightened moment, which is that the people whose businesses have failed don't get surveyed uh, because they're not there anymore or visible on the radar. But I uh, I am confident that, that fran if you want to run your own business, if you've satisfied yourself that the franchisor is offering you something that you want to do, you will be up and running faster and you stand a better chance because the mistakes have been made. They've been rectified. They've been challenged and the franchisor should have, and that's part of your due diligence, should have got in place the right advisors and guides and people to make your business successful. Um, speak to the franchisors, to the franchisees. They'll tell you if it's good. Right, Louise, we've got 23 seconds left. So uh, we're going to love you and leave you. Thank you ever so much for being our first guest today. Um, it was so nice that um, such a passionate and lovely and music-loving lady uh, was our first guest. So um, it all goes well. My grandma always used to say to me, you're full of mischief and nonsense and don't you ever change. Now I'm into lots of mischief and nonsense about franchising. So that was a bit, that was fun, wasn't it, Andras? Yeah, yeah it's always it's um, fun. Uh, it's always interesting to do something for the first time. Of course, you can you can see you know, how you can do things better. So I um, hope you bear with us and... Um, uh, we can only get better. Uh, before we wrap up today's show, uh, we're going to quickly recap the key points we discussed today. Uh, we started with an introduction to the franchise model, explaining what it is, how it works, and why it might be a good option for both business owners and entrepreneurs. Yeah, well, we highlighted the different types of franchise models, including the business format franchise and the product distribution franchise, each with own advantages and challenges. We also discussed the reason why someone might choose to uh, become a franchisee, as well as the potential challenges they might face. Yeah, and um, in our digital marketing tips segment, we focused on local social media management. We shared six tactics to improve your local social efforts, including leveraging the right platforms, developing engaging content, interacting with potential customers, local advertising, utilizing messaging capabilities, and analyzing data to make improvements. Wow. <laughs> well, we hope these insights will help you navigate the world of franchising and digital marketing more efficiently. Uh, remember, knowledge is power, and the more you know, the better decisions you can make. Yeah, yeah, knowledge, um, knowledge, and hard work and commitment. I think, um, and now a sneak peek. I like that mm -hmm. sneak peek into our next episode. We're thrilled to announce that we'll be joined by Julie Taylor, who is uh, a director of Runo Franchising. Julie has over twenty years of experience in the franchise sector, working for both national and international brands. Yeah, Julie is a good friend of mine, and Julie and her team uh, have developed a unique training program for franchise sector in col uh, collaboration with QFA, what is the quali qualified uh, quali qualified franchise association <laughs> as the one. Uh, these programs are accredited by the Institute of Leadership and Management, and they are designed to support business owners in the franchise area ar arena. Cool. 
And in addition, Julie works in partnership with Franchise Resales, um, aiding franchisees who aim to grow and develop their franchise units for a significant return on investment when they decide to sell. Of course, you know, mm-hmm. uh, exit strategies are incredibly important. Um, and uh, I, I always think that businesses are a bit like the life cycle of a human being, <laughs> so baby true. to the grave. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we'll be discussing uh, recruiting franchises and getting an independent perspective on due diligence. Uh, how do you uh, how do you do your homework before buying a franchise? Julie will be sharing her insights on this crucial topic. So, don't miss our next episode, which will be uh, in two weeks' time, I think, on the 11th yeah. of July. It's going to be packed with valuable insights and advice. And until then, stay safe and, of course, keep dreaming big. Well, thank you for joining us for Franchise Factor for our first ever show. And we'll you see. We will see you next time.